this serenity you've referenced, where do you think it comes from? Yeah, I think there's a lot of stability in his life, um, Rich. Um, you know, he's obviously in a very a very happy uh, relationship with somebody he's known a long time since college, and I mean, that's, there's a lot of security in that. And, and, and then you, you combine that with um, uh, his, his faith, you know. He's got a very, very strong and deep faith. He talks about it a lot. Mm -hmm. Ted Scott is, talks about it a lot, too. And, and I think that puts him in a very, very strong psychological position as a sports person, you know. In, in other words, the pressure, you know, is, is handed over to somebody else to deal with, you know, what's going to happen. And, and, and I'm going to be good. Somebody's got a better plan than I do, and whatever that plan is, I'm going to be good with it. And, you know, some people may ridicule that and laugh at that, but it's a very, very strong um, uh, psychological place. And, you know, if you really, really believe in it, uh, like Bernard Langer has done as well, too, and Tom Lehman throughout their careers, they put down a lot of their success, attribute a lot of it to their, to their faith. Yeah, well said. I mean, uh, everybody who's played this game for a living has, at a time or two, thought that it was becoming too all-consuming, and it's so easy for that to happen, uh, to find some balance uh, where you're not uh, uh, diminishing um, the input of your family, of your friends, of your, your role in a community. Uh, and, and it seems to me like he's got that. I mean, that was very clear to me in the Netflix special. Uh, matter of fact, where Ted Scott, uh, right before he went out to play the last round of the Masters, I believe Ted Scott said something along the lines of, remember, you're not in control yeah. today. He Obviously. is pointing uh, upstairs, you know, whereas it's easy to go out there and think, you know, everything's on the line today. What I do, this deterrence, it opens all these gates, and there's this competition. In his eyes, he's, he's out there uh, taking a walk with God. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's a foundation, and it's obviously very important to him. And you mentioned Tom Lehman. Incidentally, I mean, Tom Lehman has the lowest scoring average around here of anyone, including Tiger Woods. So perhaps the fact that this is the most stressful golf course in the world, perhaps there's a serenity to that. Yeah. You know, Scott has had some heartbreakers. You know, Brookline last year was tough. Uh, last week at Bay Hill was tough. I mean, he gets half a wedge in there, and he still makes bogey and loses the tournament, and that had to hurt. Uh, you know, uh, last year at the at FedEx Cup at, at the Tour Championship, when he lost $12 million shooting a 73 with a six-stroke lead. Mm. But you never feel it's going to hurt him. Yeah. There's something about him. He's got an armor. He's got a great serenity, as you guys mentioned that word. So calls to mind any uh, uh, wh which other sort of famous Oh, gosh, I mean, I, I think Byron Nelson probably had that going way back. Billy Casper certainly had it. When he converted to Mormonism, it changed him as a, as a competitor. In terms, He was always tough, but he was even more sort of, you know, mm -hmm. carrying himself in the biggest pressure moments as if he was in charge of it, and it showed so much at Olympic Club when he ran yeah. Larry, Larry, Nelson. Larry Nelson. There's so many. Larry good, Mize. Good. Larry Mize. There's, there's so good. many different ways yeah. of, you know, becoming strong mentally, and, you know, we're not saying that faith is the only way in any mm -hmm. way, you know. I mean, you know, you can be driven like Tiger was in a mission in life, you know, as he spoke about in his Hall of Fame speech, you know, the drive that he mm -hmm. got as a young kid, you know, that drove him. You can be like Patrick Harrington who learned how to be very strong mentally. You know, Pardic was coming second all the time in Europe, and people were saying he was weak mentally. He, you know, so many tournaments that he should have won, he didn't win, and there was a lot of criticism about him. Oh, he can't get over the line. He can't win a tournament. Now look what, where he elevated to, and a lot of that was learned from spending time with Bob Ritella. He was a huge influence on his career, as Bob did on many others. So there's different ways, you know, to become really mentally strong in this game, but you've got to have the skill set first, obviously, and uh, all the players are talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just good, decent human being. I mean, TMZ is not... Chasing him around, you know. Yeah. Nobody's retweeting his digs. You know, you mentioned Larry, Larry, uh, Larry Nelson. Uh, going back to how, you know, what a good, decent human being he is. The very first time I was ever on a golf course, I was 12. I've been playing golf a month, and my dad took me to the Byron Nelson. I was sitting in the stands behind the first green. A player on the green putted out. Didn't know who it was. He walked off the green, came up, sat beside me, asked me if I liked golf, if I wanted to play golf for, you know, in my future. I followed him over to the second hole. I looked at his bag. It was Larry Nelson. Wow. Uh, I was an instant fan. I teed off, I played with Larry Nelson, we're going down the 18th hole here, and I asked him if he remembered doing that. I knew the year, I knew the, the whole bit, and, and he didn't, but Larry Nelson <laughs> does that all the time, yeah, right. you know, he's that, he's that kind of guy. Uh, and that's, that's who Scotty Scheffler is, and that really came, came through clearly in that, uh, in that uh, Netflix battle. Well, we have you, honey, what do you think of Minwood Lee? Oh, man, he's got the gift of athletic grit.